Assalamualaikum everybody. Good morning. Now it's 10.20. Uh, we can start this uh, lecture. But uh, before that, uh, let me get your attendance for today. I have uh, Raouf. Uh, I know Shafiq. Uh, let me see. Okay. I know Shafiq. Then I have Arif Juria. I have Fitri Zubairi. I have Jaya, I have Masita, um, I have Kalish, I have uh, Shamil, and I have both Shazwan. I have Akmal. Okay. I have Noraisha. I have uh, Nor Ain Fatma. I have Gortaini. I have um, Saiful Shani and Shiva Shangri. So I don't have uh, Amili Ridwan. Uh, Haris, uh, Fatin Nazira, Muhammad Ainul Fitri, Arif Azari, uh, Nur Fazlihi, that's it. Okay, we have... Uh, all the attendants. Uh, everybody uh, ready for the Raya? Most probably tomorrow or day after. Now, uh, I'm going to share the slides. Oh, I have not uh, grab the slide, okay. Now I'm going to share the slides.
Everybody can see the slides. Can sir. Yes sir. Now uh, we are going to cover on the professional ethics uh, some of the material that we have uh, already covered actually. So I'll go very very fast eh, on that. Uh, in these slides, uh, we have professional ethics. We have uh, this the ethical dilemma, and we have the ethical design. So there are three topics, uh, three subtopics in these uh, slides actually. Okay, and uh, this is actually the lecture, the last lecture before the raya break, and we'll be back. Uh, in uh, week seventh uh, of uh, June, right? Okay, what is a profession? A profession is basically that a free act of commitment to a way of life, or one who profess to be a certain type of a person and to occupy a special social role that carries with it stringent moral requirements. And it's also an occupation which one professes to be skilled at to follow the uh, the 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 etiquette of that particular profession uh, of that particular occupation. So that is actually the definition of a profession. So that you profess to be a certain types of a person. You profess to be an engineer or whatever, or a lawyer, or a doctor, and to occupy a special social role that carries in the society. For example, a doctor, basically that, he uh, take care of the well-being of the health of the society. Right? And that role basically carries with it a stringent moral requirement. So it has a certain uh, standards uh, of do's and don'ts, uh, the moral requirements that he has to follow. And this is actually an, uh, an occupation which requires skill and to follow a certain uh, code of ethics. So that is a profession. What is a professional? And professionalism. So I let I leave it to you to what to call it uh, to think about it and to search. Eh? Maybe some of you have to write uh, a paper on that, eh? on the term paper that you need to submit. Eh? So you have to do some uh, literature review and some studies on your own. Eh? So engineering and professionalism. Engineering is a group activity. Profess. Professors, special knowledge, skill, and judgment. Actually, that we have gone through uh, about half of the semester uh, talking about the uh, engineering uh, as a profession. We are talking about what is the, the, the requirement to be an engineer and those. So you should uh, be able to know what is engineering is all about by now. Eh? It's an occupation by which most engineers earn their living and it is entered voluntarily. Nobody force you to be an engineer. Uh, you basically that join the fraternity of engineers uh, on your own uh, because of your interests maybe. Uh, so engineering serves a morally good end uh, production of technology for the benefits of mankind. So the engineering or the engineers actually develop uh, or create uh, a technology, uh, produce the technology for the benefit of mankind to be used for the good of the mankind. Uh. So the engineer's obligation uh, we've seen in the code of ethics that is uh, protecting the health and safety of the public. So that is paramount. That is normally this is the first role of engineers. Right? So the difference, uh, professional and professional, uh, personal and professional ethics. 
personal ethics it deals with how we treat others in the day to day life whereas in professional ethics often involve choices on the organizational level rather than on the personal level uh, you make choices uh, uh, in uh, making decision uh, at the organizational level uh, usually involve relationship between two cooperation uh, between a corporation and government or between cooperation and group of individual between two cooperation for example you have between a, a supplier uh, and the uh, 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 one company as a supplier uh, a supplier another company as a buyer uh, so maybe is involved in that this between these two cooperation or between corporation and government the relationship between a, a, a company with the government in terms of the regulations uh, how the government regulates uh, the company for example or the how the government uh, uh, acquire certain services or certain products from a company yeah and between uh, corporation and group of individuals this may be between a company uh, with the employees uh, with the engineers uh, so that is uh, it's involved those kind of relationship company and company company and the government company and group of individuals so the professional ethics actually relates in this uh, different types of relationships so the engineering ethics we have gone through is the rules uh, and standards governing the conduct of engineer in their role as professional uh. so the, the engineering ethics is uh, the uh, a set of rules or standard which uh, governs or regulates uh, the how the engineers behave uh, in doing their work in discharging their duties yeah. uh, applies more specifically to the situation involving engineers in the professional life so it's uh, focus on the situation where the engineers has to behave in the professional life not in the personal life but sometimes what you have acquired in a professional life that you carry forward to your personal life and what is the personal life uh, the 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 habits or the moral values that you have in your personal life not sometimes you bring it into your professional life also as long as it's uh, does not conflicts between the two uh, it's it is it, it, it should be all right it should be okay yeah? it's a body uh, engineering ethics also is a body of philosophy indicating the ways that engineers should conduct themselves in their professional capacity so it's also a philosophy for example for this uh, the main uh, uh, philosophy that we have uh, as the engineering uh, and ethics is that the benefit of the mankind it's for the goodness of the mankind is again and again and again we always emphasize about the for the benefit and health of the mankind of the society okay yeah? Code of ethics is, is uh, intended to ensure the control and exercise is in the interest of the community. Yeah? It's always about the public. Yeah? The primary emphasis is on the engineer's responsibility to society as a whole. So it uh, focus on you as an engineer. Uh, what is your responsibility to the society? Yeah? The code also seeks to address the tension between responsibility to the community. to the employer and to you as the professional and also to your fellow other professional right so you you have this uh, this three or four entities which is you have community you have your employer you and also your fellow engineers so and yourself so this four entities that uh the uh, in this uh, whole ecosystem right eh? that you need to address uh, 
uh, the this code basically that to address the tension or maybe there are certain conflicts of interest between these four entities. Eh? It can provide uh, guidance and help to make people aware of the ethical content of their work. So the code of ethics actually to pro provide the guidance and also to assist them uh, in making people aware of what are the uh, 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 the work of uh, the ethical content of the engineer's work. It can raise the consciousness in an organization uh, so that people that uh, uh, that the organization aware uh, of the role and responsibilities of the engineers. So basically, that the engineers are not only responsible for the company, but also they have a bigger role, which is uh, to take care of the interests of the society. Yeah. So can help stimulate, uh, stimulate the ethical behavior and give helpful guidance and advice on moral obligation. Uh. So it helps uh, the engineers uh, to make it into a habit, uh, this ethical uh, 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 behavior. Uh, it can give moral and legal support uh, to the professional. Uh, for, for us, uh, uh, that we are familiar with the IEEE Code of Ethics, the IEM Code of Ethics, and Board of Engineers Code of Ethics. And the most important one is the Board of Engineers, uh, BM Code of Ethics, uh, for us as a mission engineers. Uh, And uh, if you are a member of IEM, therefore, that uh, IEM Code of Ethics is actually bounded uh, upon you. Uh, but in general, it's the Board of Engineers Code of Ethics uh, that uh, that we adhere to. Uh. So this is an example. Uh, we have seen this. I'm not going to go through. Right? So, What are the impediments uh, to the responsible action of an engineer or anybody yeah, in any uh, occupation that you always have these uh, uh, impediments? Normally, it's the self-interest. You have your own agenda. You have your own uh, interest that you want to protect. And sometimes, and most, uh, sometimes this self-interest go against the interests of the society or the interests of the company. So, when that happens, and if you put your self-interest ahead of the uh, interests of the society, therefore, you will do uh, uh, certain action which is will go against the society or even uh, will go against the, the law. So that is one of the impediments uh, to the responsible action. The second one is self-deception. They need tipu diri sendiri. You deceive yourself. Is also an impediment to responsible action. Fear. The third one is that fear in acknowledging your mistakes. You hide your mistakes. You don't acknowledge. You don't own up to your mistake. Yeah? In your work, for example. Right? Ignorance. You don't know that what you are doing is, is something which is an irresponsible action. Or even you, you are ignorant of something that you are doing is actually illegal. Egocentric tendencies. This is your self-ego. Eh? That sometimes that you do irresponsible, irresponsible thing because you want to show that you are better than anybody else that you forget that you work in a group or you try to put eh, 
uh, just to get what you want and you ignore what the what the uh, team members uh, 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 opinion or suggestions. Eh? So this is egocentric tendencies. Microscopic vision that uh, you have a limited perspective that you did you don't see the full view of the issue. This is also an impediment to the resp responsible action. So you need to have uh, what we call it helicopter's view or an overall view uh, so that you'll be able to see at the macro level, not only the, mi the, the, the micro level. Right? Uncritical acceptance of authority. So sometimes that uh, you um, is either you are always go against the authority or go against the the, the, the establishment that also an uh, uh, the impediment to the uh, responsible responsible action or if you are to the other extreme, which is that you just follow by the book that you forget about being compassion, for example. So you make decision uh, based on just what is written in the book without taking into consideration of other factors. That also can be uh, uh, an impediment. Uh, so you have two extremes. One is you you follow, you go by the book to the point that you have no compassion. Another uh, extreme is that you against the, est uh, the establishment where you disregard uh, the authority. So both basically can be impediments to the responsible action. Another one is groupthink. Groupthink is actually uh, can become a problem where there is no critical evaluation of the ideas or of the solution suggested by the team members. So this sometimes is always happen when a group is uh, together for too long that they start uh, to mirror each other and they just accept uh, each other's idea whether uh, without uh, going through the rigorous uh, evaluation or critically challenging uh, the idea before they come up with a decision. So that is groupthink. Eh? That is also an impediment of to resp responsible action. Basically, that when somebody suggests, suggests, okay, why not we do A, for example, as a, as the solution? Then everybody says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is actually uh, a sign of the groupthink, without even uh, asking, okay, can you explain about this? What about this? What about that? So there is no probing uh, uh, to to, uh, to find uh, the weaknesses or the strength of that particular idea as a solution, right? Ethical cases is go far beyond the issues of public safety. Is involved bribery, fraud. Uh, environmental protection, fairness, uh, honesty in research and testing, conflict of interest. I think we have covered this uh, previously in previous lecture, right? So I can skip this. Okay. Possible level of ethical authority. Yeah. This is actually that uh, 
in terms of the authority uh, the, in terms of the level of, of ethical uh, authority can be uh, based on the religious or other beliefs eh, that you look at as an example uh, uh, how you make ethical decision based on your belief based on religious belief for example uh, if, if if it's in medical it's uh, maybe about the abortion eh? so some doctors eh, will avoid or will not do abortion because of the religious belief that they say that is illegal and some they said okay so religious belief uh, can be uh, an ethical authority uh, for you in making decisions. Another uh, example, another one is that the examples of great leaders. They look at what the great leaders has done as an example uh, of the ethical authority. Uh, if this particular person uh, who is well known in the society in, a, in in the community of engineers for example and this is actually the for example the solution that this particular uh, person uh, has done it for a case like this then you, you follow that uh, as uh, as the, the guideline uh, for you to make decision. That's also uh, another uh, ethical authority. Another one is that laws of the land. What are the effective law in your community, in your country? So you follow that as the ethical authority in making decision. Code of ethics of professional bodies. You as an engineer, you follow the code of ethics of board of engineers. Recognize customs and ideals. What are the customs in that particular community? That can be an ethical authority that you follow. The golden rules. What are the basic rules, uh, the, the golden rules that people follow? and owns one's own conscience. What you yourself feel, your conscience tell you whether this is an ethical decision or not. And another one is that situational decision is on case by case basis. That you make decision, that you make ethical decision based on the situation. So it's a case by case basis. So these are some of the possible levels of ethical authority. So with that, normally that you have dilemmas. Dilemma means that it's a, it's a difficult choices that you have to make. So in your professional career, you will be going to face this ethical dilemma. It's the difficulty in or, or, the, uh, or, or in making a difficult ethical choices that you have to make. And these ethical choices actually involves, uh, will affect your reputation, your employability, and also the welfare of others. So this will, uh, the choices that you make will affect these three. Your reputation as an engineer. Your employability. Sometimes that when you go against the company, then maybe the company will fire you, will terminate you. When you have been terminated by the company, Therefore, your employability uh, will reduce. Nobody wants to take you. For example, let's say you become a whistleblower. Even though 
you are making the right decision, the ethical decision. Uh, maybe your reputation is uh, is good. Somebody who is basically that uh, uh, has a high integrity, but, but certain company will feel that a hey, I cannot take this guy because one day maybe he will go against my decision. So the employability will affect. And also the welfare of others. Sometimes when you report a certain uh, misconduct, then that particular person that you have reported maybe will lose his job. So what about his family well-being? Who is going to feed his children? So these are the effects of your decision. Your reputation, your employability, and the welfare of others. And we can see this uh, in certain cases, uh, uh, in high-profile examples of Space Shuttle Challenger and Columbia and whatnot. Eh? So the decision of engineers and scientists have serious implications, not only to himself, but also to the society and to others who are affected by that decision. So the practice of engineer in business is governed by many laws and regulations. So we have gone through these laws uh, uh, in the earlier part of the semester, uh, company law, contract law, uh, OSHA, uh, IP, yeah, intellectual property right, and a few other laws that we have gone through, right? And uh, these laws are basically that uh, based on ethical principles of uh, uh, legal and ethics. It is about the legality yeah, versus the ethic ethics. Uh, so the one that giving you the ethical dilemma into a situation when there is legal but unethical. Something which is legal according to the law but it is unethical. Another a situation when you have something which is illegal but it could be ethical. So how are you going to make the decision based on this? In these two situations. Right? So you are going to encounter ethical dilemmas in, in your career. That one, I have no doubt. You will encounter this when you go to work. Uh, whether it's both... Uh, technical or in your interpersonal skill, in your uh, relationship with other people uh, in your workplace. Eh? You will encounter this. Example of things that you will encounter. The company will say, that, okay, we have invested a lot of time and money in this design. So we should release this product now, if not, we are losing a lot of money. You as an engineer, you say, no, I cannot release this design yet. It's not fully tested, for example. Or it has some flaws in it. But the company will ask you, hey, I want to release this. this, this uh, the company want to release this, this design. Another example. The company's future depends on this. So if you don't make this decision, this decision, then the company is in jeopardy, for example. So those are the kind of ethical dilemmas that we will face. 
third is there any way that we can make adjustment to make it pass the certificate uh, this is sometimes that okay maybe we can trade off or we can loosen the specs uh, the specifications so that it will pass the test or oh, ah sikit je tak apa punya that kind of situation that sometimes people ask you to close one eye so these are the ethical dilemmas that you have to handle so the decision that you make must be both ethical and legal it has this dimension this ethical and legal dimension to that so ideally it has to be ethical and also legal there is an ideal situation the legality may be in the form of internal company policies or local policies or federal laws so the legality is is in this in, in this case is very broad not just in terms of law but also in terms of the company policy yeah that we are talking about in that context yeah? so when you have uh, two dimension uh, two variables which is ethical ethics and legal therefore you have four possibilities Uh, you have four possibilities which is um, uh, you have four possibilities uh, is not legal legal is no ethical not ethical and is ethical so the combination of these two So the first one is that is is uh, not legal and not ethical. So this one is very easy, simple. Another one is that you have the is legal and also ethical. The quadrant four. So quadrant one and quadrant four is easy to handle. The problematic one is that you have this quadrant two. Which is is legal, but not ethical. And quadrant three, which is is ethical, but not legal. So you have this uh, dilemma. Hmm? These two, eh? quadrant three and uh, quadrant two and quadrant three are the dilemmas. These two, these two quadrants. These two is easy. Yeah. Quadrant is clearly to be avoided, so you cannot do it. Right? So that's very simple solution. If it's not legal and not ethical, don't do it. Quadrant four is legal and ethical, then you can. Then you do it. You can do it. You can make that decision. Quadrant two is legal but are not ethical. What does it mean by legal and not ethical? Legal means that there is no punitive ramification. There is no uh, uh, punishment if you do that, but it has a negative impact on your personal reputation as an engineer so um, this is actually that you have how are you going to deal with this it's legal that decision that you are going to take is legal but it has an impact negative impact on your pro professional reputation 
maybe people will see you as somebody who has no compassion. Somebody who is very strict, go by the book kind of person. This is the one that I mentioned to the other extreme. And that is a non-negotiable. If it's written that way in the law, that's how you are going to do it. But maybe your decision will affect your personal reputation. Right? So this is a quadrant two. Quadrant three, it is legal, it is ethical, but it's not legal. So the decision feels right and tempting. But if you make that decision, you will go, you will go against the law. So you will be, there is a punishment. So how are you going to do it? to deal with this. You feel that that decision is right. But if you make that decision, maybe you are going to, to be punished. You are, maybe you are going to be fired from the company. So most dilemmas actually takes place in this quadrant two and three. This actually represent opportunities for reforms. Basically that you need to change the systems maybe, or you need to change the law. It's something which is morally right, but not legal. Maybe that there, there is a need to change the law to make it legal. A few months ago, we talked about the uh, marijuana, right? The usage of marijuana for cancer patients, for example. It's illegal uh, for marijuana to be uh, to be used. But there are uh, empirical evidence that it actually benefits uh, for cancer patients. So morally, you should give these cancer patients an opportunity uh, to use marijuana as part of their medication. But it is illegal. So there was one person who actually was found guilty in court for providing marijuana uh, oil for cancer patients. So this is an example of ethical, but it's illegal. The example of quadrant three. So uh, the previous government has wanted to legalize marijuana for medicinal purposes. So they tried to change the law to make it legal. So that the, the, the ethical choices are legal. Instead of ethical choices, this illegal are uh, illegal so there is an example of the opportunities how to change or to reform the law uh, and to make something which is unethical uh, in 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 the um, uh, for the quadrant 2 which is it is unethical but it is legal and to change to become that whatever is unethical, it becomes illegal. So that means that uh, 
to change from quadrant two, quadrant two to be to become quadrant one, and quadrant three to become quadrant four. Okay, so just now I this quadrant three basically basically this is uh, the example that that I use, which is the uh, usage of marijuana for uh, ma uh, cancer patient. So they are here. So to reform, to move to quadrant four, to make it legal. Whereas for the ones that is legal but not ethical, we try to move to become quadrant, part of quadrant one. So that is the uh, reforms or to change the systems positively. So that you can reduce your the your ethical dilemma. Clear. Responsibilities of engineers. Not only responsible for employers, but also to society and environment and whatnot. Eh? So you as an engineer, not only responsible to your employer. You are responsible for the organ in terms of organizational, which is that customer, employees, and the shareholders. Huh? You are responsible to achieve the organizational objectives. Huh? Also to make sure that the company is profitable. Huh? So yeah, uh, that is uh, one of your responsibilities huh? in terms of the organization at the organizational level. At the profession level, you are responsible for the code of ethics. You need to follow the code of ethics. You can, if you go against the code of ethics, you can be disbarred, or you can be your 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 professional engineer title can be taken back by the board of engineers, and you cannot practice as, as an engineer. To the society, you're, you are responsible for their safety and well-being of the public. For the environment, you are responsible in protecting the environment and the safety of the environment. So those are the four main responsibility of the engineers in the society. Right? So... One of the jobs of engineer is doing the design. So in design, it also has some ethical conduct. So what is the ethical in design? First, we need to look at the engineering design. What is the engineering design? Engineering design is basically like creating new devices and product for future use and can never be obsolete, eh? certain, can never be absolute certain. The design will never harm anyone. That is the nature of the engineering design. You create something new. Eh? New devices and product for future use. Eh? And in your design, you never have absolutely certain that your design will never harm anyone. It's not 100%. So therefore, in order to ensure that your design has the lowest possibility of harming anybody, anyone, that you have to test your design thoroughly. So test your design thoroughly as times and resources permits. Of course, you cannot uh, do uh, all the all the possible tests, for example, because maybe it costs a lot of money or it takes time. So you need to plan, design your test so that 
you can ensure the safety, uh, the operation, uh, the safety operation of your products or devices as much as possible. And you use the creativity to foresee the possible consequences of your work. So, when I was in 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 uh, in Motorola, uh, we need uh, to test our products to see uh, what is the behavior of the product over time. So we cannot uh, uh, wait. Uh, to see uh, what happened to this uh, product over five years. So therefore, we design an accelerated life test uh, so that we can simulate uh, the behavior of the products over five years in a short time span. So we use an accelerated life test. Uh, we put uh, the device in the chamber and we vary the temperature hot and cold so that to uh, accelerate uh, the life uh, of the device as if it has been going through uh, uh, being used over five years to see whether, when it will fail, what, what are the parameters that will fail, those kind of things. So we use our creativity yeah, to test, to foresee the possible consequences of that design. Okay? The ethical design process uh, in, in project application when you do the project, these are some of the ethical design, uh, uh, the ethics uh, in the design process. First, have you conduct adequate research to understand the prior arts? Prior arts, basically that, what are the, the things that is being done previously, uh, that being, being uh, patented by other people, for example. So, have you conduct adequate research on that to understand what's involved in that in the in that particular design? Are you infringing on patents or copyright of others? So you need to do patent search to see whether what are you designing is contravening, infringing on other. Uh, on, on others' patents or not. If it's infringing other patents, basically that uh, ethically, you cannot use that without the permission from the owner. And you can be sued if you use that design or that IP, yeah, the intellectual property, without the consent of the owner of that IP. Second, do, do your requirement specification meets the needs of the stakeholders? You ask yourself whether the specifications that you of your design will meet the need of the stakeholders. Did you make the design space as large as possible? Try search, what does it mean by design space? Hmm? I will give, uh, I want you to, uh, to search that. Eh? Did you identify and apply relevant safety standards in your design? What are the safety standards that you that your product need to comply? If you are in military, therefore you need to comply to the military standards. Uh, there are various standards that's available, STANEC and whatnot. Uh, not just ISO. ISO mostly that one is for the civilian products. 
but for military product they are they have specific standards that they have okay they are more rigid standards that they have okay? for example the computer that you have uh, that you use uh, in a normal usage in the office and what not uh, will not be acceptable uh, to be used in the military uh, uh, condition it has to be hardened uh, so you have to make sure that uh, you apply the relevant standard or safety standards to the product so that it's suitable to be used in the intended environment that is supposed to be used do you consider all possible ways a design can fail this is actually a, a common problem where you only design uh, your product to work uh, in the uh, you uh, you only consider uh, the uh, your design is uh, to work in this way but you forget to consider if this happen how your equipment behave so uh, you need to consider all possible ways of this design can happen so in the software sometimes that we we only uh, write the cases which is will give you the right result but what happen if somebody put in the wrong input which is out of the uh, uh, out of the range how you 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 handle that how you take into consideration for example so that's why sometimes the application hang because you have an undetermined condition so you need to 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 handle that so that your your application will not hang so you have to take into consideration all of the possible ways a design can fail did you consider ways the product can be misused for example you design a product to be used for a job a but this product actually can be used for something for b which is not intended uh, in your design so how can you design your product so that it will not do that job b which is considered as a misuse of the product so you need to take into that kind of consideration also did you conduct a design reviews is your design has gone through the design reviews who review your design have you reverse engineered others product reverse engineering others product is illegal is unethical so have you re engineered uh, reverse engineered another's product so you need to consider that are your cost and project schedules fair and realistic are uh, you overcharge your customers did the design pass acceptance tests does it go through the verification by the customer so this is actually an example of the design process i actually prefer the v model where it takes into consideration for each steps uh the testing and verification this is actually a general model where you start with the conops which is a concept of operation uh, at the concept of operation uh, you prepare uh, operation and maintenance uh, uh procedure and what not so at this step you prepare this 
then you go to the next step is requirement and architecture you have to prepare the system verification and validation when you do detailed design you have to prepare the integration and test and verification then of course you do the implementation after you have implemented then you do the testing basically at this part that you do the testing for this additives and this part you do the testing system test verification this part you do the acceptance test so this is actually the general model but if you go into detail this is when you have the uh, this is the for uh, v model for systems engineering first you start with the uh, architecture uh, this is actually the the life cycle uh, in a systems engineering you start from the regional architecture until to the you retire the the product right so you get what are the needs uh, for that particular uh, product you look at the feasibility study uh, concept exploration then you go into the concept of operation the conops here basically that uh, you start you preparing the system validation plan uh, and this is actually the the, uh, the approval of the, the of the document basically that you have the conops uh, approval here and at the same time system validation document also being approved so this part actually is done by the um, uh, testing uh, people, test, test, test department. This part is in the design and engineering department. After CONOPS, then you prepare the system's requirement. At the same time, the testing will prepare the system verification and deployment plan. So when the system requirement is approved, system verification plan also approved. Then you go to high level design. At the same time, the test people prepare the subsystem verification plan. Then you go into the detailed design and the test people will prepare the unit or device testing. And this is the implementation. Or you do the, the implement whether hardware or software. Then you start to do the testing. Yeah, you need testing, uh, subsystem verification, system verification, system validation. System validation is basically that is the acceptance test here. Then it goes into operation. When it's accepted, goes into operation and maintenance. There'll be upgrades and whatnot. And after that, you replace or retire the product. So this is actually the V model in systems engineering. So I like this model, right? So this is another depiction of the V model where it shows you basically that uh, this one is start from the customer requirement. Uh, a system requirement, system architecture. Then after that, it start. Uh, after you have done the system architecture, then you get you split uh, into various subsystems. Uh, then you start the subsystem requirement and subsystem architecture, detailed design, and whatnot. So just like uh, previously, but this is more detailed. This is the V model for software. Uh, so. The concept is is the same. Uh, basically, that this is at the at the engineering part, and this is at the testing part, and is uh, in parallel in preparing the 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 document. Uh, then after that, you do the execution. Uh, this is this way is the execution, and this way is the preparation of the document of the protocol testing protocol and whatnot so that is what i'm going to cover today uh, in terms of the uh, professional ethics
uh, ethical dilemma, uh, ethics in design, and show you some models uh, that you can use in uh, project application. Yeah? So I've shown you the systems engineering V model, and I've shown you the software uh, engineering V model, right? So any question? No, no, no. So so basically that uh, we um, about one hour juga. Eh? I thought I I thought I can do in uh, in uh, forty five minutes uh, or half an hour. So any question? No sir. No question. So basically, that uh, we what to call it. Um, we are done for today. And uh, if you have any question or not, you can send to the WhatsApp. And in terms of the term paper, I have not. Um, I have not uh, allocate uh, these uh, names the names yet uh, what i will do is that maybe within uh, this uh, holiday i will do that and then i put in put on the uh, model right i put on the model uh, now i'm going to okay, wait, uh, okay. So any question? And I think uh, you okay. have until July uh, to complete your assignment, your the paper. And also, most probably that in July, we'll do the presentation, the online presentation. Okay? So basically, that you have two. Term paper that you have to submit. Uh, that one, you don't need uh, uh, to present. Uh, the second one is the presentation. The presentation, that one we will do online presentation. Right? So, anything, uh, any questions? If not, I'm going to stop the recording and we can uh, dismiss. No question. Ah, Mama Amili, you are here. Yes, sir. Who else? Okay. Uh, who else? That, uh, Haris is here or not? Haris, Ridwan, or oh, Ridwan is here. Uh, who else? Uh, Fatin Nazira? Not here. Ayanul Fitri, Arif Azhari, Arif Azhari is here. Okay. Uh, Don Fazlihi. Okay. Let me check. Sorry, uh, Aris. Okay. Okay. No, Fazli is here. Kalau tak jawab tu memang tak ada tempat, tak, tak, tak ada depan apa ni lah tu. Just on ni tu. Okay. So, uh, if you don't have any question, then uh, I can stop the recording and we can dismiss. Thank you, sir. And uh, selamat hari raya to everybody. Uh, if there is any kesilapan and whatnot, uh, silap gurau ke apa semua, minta maaf. Selamat hari raya, sir. Okay, selamat hari raya. And... Uh,
see you uh, on the week of uh, 7th June. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sampai raya, sir. Mak saya matin. Okay, sama. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sampai raya. Jangan lupa, sir. Sampai raya. Okay. So, now I...